bless to you, God. We thank you. God, we bless your name today. God, we lift you. Scripture declares that you are great and greatly to be praised. that 
which I was afraid of is come unto me. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, he had so much of a reverence for God. Uh -huh. So much of a God consciousness. So much godly fear. That any time his ten children got together to celebrate one another's birthday by way of feasting and fellowship, Job would always send for them afterwards Amen. for the sake of sanctifying them. That's right. That's right. And after he would retrieve them, after they would come, he would rise up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings to God on their behalf. Right. Job wanted to make sure that if his kids had sinned, whether through their actions or in their hearts. Right. He wanted to do his part through intercession so that hopefully they would be in right standing with the Lord. Amen. But then the Bible goes on to tell us that on one particular day as the angels had come and presented themselves unto God, it tells us that Satan himself showed up in the number. Uh -huh. He had been roaming throughout the earth trying to find a body to inhabit. Right. Trying to find somebody he could defeat and destroy. That's right. So God asked Satan whether or not he had considered Job. Then Satan replied that the Lord had a hedge around him. Mm -hmm. He had a hedge around Job's house. He had a hedge around everything that Job had. Amen. Therefore, it was impossible for Satan to do anything to Job. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me just pause to say that it's good to know that God will hedge you in. Good to know that God has a way of protecting you in such a way that no matter how much the devil tries, he can't do anything unless the Lord allow him to do it. So he says, Job is protected by your hedge. Job himself, his household, and all that he has. Therefore, there was nothing that Satan could do. But then Satan even implied that the only reason why that Job served the Lord in the first place is because God had blessed the works of Job's hands. 
and he had increased his substance in the land, and this was the main reason in Satan's mind, in Satan's eyes, this was the only reason that Job praised the Lord. The only reason why that Job served the Lord is because of what the Lord had done for Job. This is the conclusion that Satan had arrived at concerning Job. Even Satan has enough sense to know that some people will only serve God based on what God does for them. Some people will only bless God and praise God based on how God blesses them. But I need you to understand, brothers and sisters, it's not about what God does for us that determines whether or not we praise God. It's not about what God does for us that determines whether or not we serve God. Just the fact that God gave us life, that should be enough in itself. But not only did he give us life, but he gave us the ability to think. That should be enough. When you think about his mercy, his grace, his kindness, that should be enough. Whether you have more or less, the fact that God has blessed you, he has kept you, and he's keeping you right now, that ought to be enough. Even if you never get the new car, the new house, if you never get the new outfit, the new job, the new promotion, what God has already done should be enough. Even if you don't drive what other folk drive, you don't live how other folk live, you don't wear what other folk wear, the fact that God has already graced you, given you mercy and compassion, that should be enough. It should be enough just knowing that God loves you. That should be enough. The fact that he sent his only begotten son to die on your behalf, that should be enough. The fact that he raised it from the dead for our justification, that should be enough. The fact that every day we wake up, there's new mercy that we see, that should be enough. It should be enough that God just loves us just for us being up. That should be enough in itself. That should be. But the truth of the matter is, some people's service to God is only contingent upon what God does for them. It's only contingent upon what they wear, what they drive, how much money they have, and so forth and so on. But can I tell you something? Just because you have money don't mean you have morals. Just because you have money don't mean you have joy. Because even rich folk have killed themselves. Brothers and sisters, there comes a point where you have to learn how to appreciate the simple things in life. Are you hearing me up in here? There comes a point in life where you got to learn how to just say, Lord, I thank you for the sun. I thank you for the rain. I thank you for the blue sky. Sometimes you want to just sit down and say, God, I just thank you. I'm able to sit here. I'm able to compensate in my mind. I'm able to hear the birds singing. I see the cars going by. At some point, you want to just take God. Just, just take time to thank God for your five senses. What was the last? Last time you thank God that you were able to see. What the last time you thank God that you were able to hear. What the last time you thank God you were able to smell. What the last time you thank God you were able to taste. What the last time you thank God you were able to feel. What the last time you just thank God. Even what we declare to be the simple thing. Sometimes you won't get any more until you learn how to appreciate what you already have. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in here? Yeah. Until you learn to appreciate what you have, you can always expect God to bless you with more. Because if you don't take care of what you have, why would he trust you with anything more? Talk to me, somebody. Brothers and sisters, so Satan says, 
Job is only serving you because of how you have blessed him. I hope that's not what he thinks of you. I hope that Satan doesn't think that you only come to St. Philip because of what God has done for you. I hope that he doesn't think that you only praise God because of what God has done for you. I hope that there's something on the inside that, 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 can, that, that can say this right here. I just praise God because God loves me. That, that, that should be something about you that can say, you know, I just praise God because God cares about me. So brothers and sisters, Satan said to God, if you just put your hand on Job, touch yourself, Job will curse you to your face. In other words, if you take some stuff from him, tear some stuff up, Satan is saying, Job is going to curse you, God, to your face. Because all he serves you for is, is based on what you did for him. It's based on his material stuff. That's why he served. That's right. That's what he it's amazing how some people don't shout until they get something new. To talk, talk to me, somebody. So some of y'all don't say anything until you got something new. You, you know how I know when you have new stuff? You, you, you shout, get more intensified, talk to me, somebody. <laughs> you, you know how I know when some of y'all get new stuff? Because now you want to open your mouth, you want to say something, you want to praise God. But, but, but when you don't have anything, and yet you can still open up your mouth. When you don't have what the next person has, then you can still open up your mouth. That is a grateful person right there. That says, God, I don't have it yet, but God, what you already gave me, God, I thank you. God, I don't have the Mercedes, I don't have the Bentley, I don't have the Rolls Royce, but God, what I got, get me from point A to point B. God, I don't wear the latest fashion, but God, my body is cold. I got shoes on my feet. Is there anybody in here that can testify? You might not have the latest, but you thank God for what you have. You don't have the best, but you thank God for what you have. You don't have the most designer stuff, but you thank God for what you have. Please understand, sometimes God want to see how are you going to bless him. And you don't have much. But I can tell when some of y'all get new stuff. You come to church on time? You speak to folk you wouldn't normally speak to? You have a conversation that you wouldn't normally have? Because you just anxious to tell somebody about the new stuff you have. Talk to me, somebody. You won't tell nobody about the Lord. But you'll tell somebody about your new stuff. Talk to me. You know how some of you do. He said, when you touch this stuff, he's going to curse you to your face. So to prove Satan wrong, God gave Satan permission to bring disruption and chaos to Job's life. But he told him, you can do everything except don't put your hands on Job personally. Text says, he said, God said these words, he said, he said, he said, look, behold all that he has is in your mind. It's in your hands, it's in your control. But just don't put your hand on Job. So he gave him permission to do damage. And the first thing that Satan did, he used the Sabaeans to invade and seize Job's 1,000 oxen and 500 female donkeys and to kill the servants that were attending them. Then after that, Satan used lightning bolts to burn up the 7,000 sheep and to burn up the servants that were attending them. Then 
Satan used the Chaldeans to come in three regiments or three regimes and steal Job's 3,000 camels and to kill the servants that attended them. Brothers and sisters, you would think that that would be enough. Please understand all of Job's livestock is now gone. Not only has that affected his own food supply, but it has also affected his means of income. Brothers and sisters, must understand the devil. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You have to understand who the devil really is. He is not satisfied with you having minor damage in your life. He wants you to have a total loss in your life. Again, he steals, he kills, and he destroys. That's why what he had done was not enough. He was not satisfied at taking Job's livestock. Wasn't satisfied at messing up Job's food supply. He wasn't satisfied at messing up Job's means of income. The Bible said that while Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house, there came a great wind, or a tornado-like wind, blew upon the house in such a way that the house fell down, crushed all his children. They all died at the same time. The children that Job had prayed for, they are now dead. The children that he interceded for on a regular basis, those same children are now dead. Not one dead, not three dead, not even five dead, not even seven children dead. But all ten children of Job, dead, now, died at the same time. I need you to hear this, brothers and sisters. Job prayed for a kid. He gave burnt offerings unto God on their behalf. He interceded for his kids. But now his kids are dead. The kids he prayed for are dead. Some of you got to understand, brothers and sisters, just because his kids are dead, well, it doesn't mean that Job's prayers were ineffective. All right, all right. Hear this. His prayers were not meant to prevent his children from death. That's right. His prayers were meant to prepare his children for death. Let me back up say it again. His prayers were not meant to prevent his children from death. His prayers were meant to prepare his children for death. That's why he said, in case they had sinned or even cursed God in their heart. He wanted to make sure that his kids were in the right standing with God. He wanted to make sure that if anything happened to his kids, uh-huh. his kids would be in right standing with God. Yeah. Yeah. 
So as long as they were in right standing with God, whenever death did come, it would be well with their soul. All right. All right. Again, he didn't pray to prevent them from death. But his prayers are meant to prepare them for them. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand we don't know what befalls or what's ahead of up, up the road for us and our children. Amen. That's why it's important for us to prepare them for death. All right. We can't always stop the next car from coming into their lane. Amen. We can't always stop sickness from invading their body. Right. But what we can do is prepare them for when death does come. Amen. That's why it's important for us, brothers and sisters, to make sure we do our part in not only living the life before them, but also pray for them on a regular basis. Amen. Because when it's all over said and done, you and I ought to want our children to rest in the arms of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, he prayed for them, preparing them to meet their maker. Yes. Preparing them that whenever death did show up, they will be in right standing with their creator, almighty God. Right. So now, they're gone. And you, when you think about the magnitude of Job's losses, culminating with the loss of all of his 10 kids at the same time. You would think that there's a possibility that he would develop a disappointment, a doubt, or even a disdain for God himself. After all now, God allowed this to happen. But the Bible says, Job tore his robe, shaved his head, fell down on the ground, and the text says he worshiped. He said, naked, I came out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return that. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. But then he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't have what I used to have, but still blessed be the name of the Lord. Some things have been taken away from me, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Some people have been taken away from me, but the text says, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. It says, and all of this, Job did not see it, nor did he charge God foolishly. He didn't say, God is your fault. He didn't say, God, you did this to my children. You did this to my son. You did this to my life. It's your fault. God. He didn't say that. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. Oftentimes we quote the scripture when it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, but how much do you really mean that? All right. All right. How much do you really mean when you say you have blessed the Lord at all times? Right. When you lost your job, did you still bless the Lord? Well, when a repo man came at your car, did you still bless the Lord? When a loss came to your family, did you still bless the Lord? Because if you didn't bless the Lord, then you told a lie. Because you said, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But baby, you have to understand, that don't mean that's when things are going good. It doesn't mean that when you're on a mountaintop, it means that even down in the valley, you still got to bless God. It means when trouble comes, you still got to bless God. It means that no matter what comes, what goes, I'm still going to bless God. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it may be easier than it is at other times, but I'm still going to bless His 
name. I may not feel like shouting all the time, but I'm going to bless this man because when I think about how good he's been to me, even down in my down moments, he's still good. He's still God because even while I'm down, he's helping holding me together. Even while I'm down, he's still keeping my mind. His praise shall continually, continually be in my mind. And the sisters, Job exemplifies that scripture himself. Even though David is the one that said it, yet we see Job also, we see in him, he, he actually exemplified that himself with all that he had just lost. He still blessed the Lord. He still blessed the name of the Lord. He still fell down and worshiped God. Lord, oh good God, there are times when you might not understand it, but you still got to bless God. It may not make sense sometimes, but you still ought to bless God. Sometimes it may just escape your mental grasp, but you still ought to bless God. Even when it happened pacing the floor, you ought to still bless God. Even when tears are falling from your face, you ought to still bless God. Even when it just don't add up, you ought to still bless God. Because the fact of the matter is, he is still on the throne. And just like he blessed you before, he can bless you again. If he gave it to you one time, he can give it to you again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Is there anybody in here that believe in the power of your God? Body. Well, 
But you can't take his life. So Satan afflicted Job's body with sore and painful boils from the sole of Job's feet all the way to the crown of Job's head. All Job could do was suffer and try to find some kind of relief by using a piece of broken pottery to scrape himself with. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine the agony, the pain, the discomfort. But this is Job was in bad shape. Yes. Yes. He was in real bad shape. Mm -hmm. His heart was broken. Well. His health was bad. His heart was broken. His health was bad. He had inner pain and he had outer pain. Job was in real bad shape. All he had left was his wife. So you would think that because he still has his wife. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That despite all the darkness that had come to his life, well, that there was still a ray of sunshine. Right. Still a ray, a ray of hope. Well, yeah. After all, he had his wife. You will think. It's going to be all right. Amen. Because he has a wife. Well. For it was Solomon that said, He that finds a wife yeah. finds a good thing. Right. So you would think that because he still has his wife, yeah. there's still a reason to have hope. There's still somebody there to show him some support. Well, all right. All right. Somebody to speak words of power and words of encouragement into his life. Yeah, sure. yeah. You would think that he had somebody to have his back. Uh -huh. Somebody to say, I know it's tough, but baby, we're going to be all right. physically but baby I'm here with you you're not going to go through this by yourself you're not going to face this alone we're going to go through this together you, you would think that this was the atmosphere inside of his home you, you, you would think that, that, that Job had, had, had a reason to lift up his head knowing that, that there's a wife that that was there to support him to hold him up because he was leaning right now Joe jo was leaning he was leaning he was leaning he was leaning but yet he had a wife he would think that she was the one that would hold him up But the text says, after he began scraping himself with the broken pottery, he then sat down in the ashes. And instead of her coming to sit down with him, instead of her asking, honey, is there anything I can do for you? Is there any way I can help ease the pain? Is there anything I can do to help you to endure what you're going through? Is there anything? That's what I'm here for. She said, 
Do you still retain your integrity? Are you still going to be an upright man in all of this? Are you still going to be an honest, trustworthy man in all of this? Are you still going to love God and fear God and serve God in all of this? Are you still going to be this man of God in all of this that you're going through? Why don't you just cuss God? Or curse God? Curse God and die. Wow. Now I understand, Mrs. Job, that you lost kids too. I understand that you are in pain too. I understand that you have some emotional stuff going on. I know you're hurting. I understand, Mrs. Job, you're hurting right now. But this ain't the time to act a fool. This is the time to come together. Because, Miss Job, you got to understand your husband has lost more than you lost. Because right now, his health is gone. You got to understand, Miss Job, he is the one that made it possible for you to enjoy all the lavish lifestyle that you've been enjoying all these years. Oh, Miss Job, you got to understand, it ain't about you. Instead of her being a support, she almost became a stumbling block. She said, why don't you just curse God? Speak a curse on the God and die. Fix it, 
pastor. Why did not Joe the devil kill Joe's wife? God gave him permission to do it. You can touch everything, but don't touch your, your body. So why did the devil spare Job's wife's life? Well, have you ever thought about it? I know you have. I know you have. I know you have. Brother, you have. Yeah. Brother, you have to understand. If you look at the text, the devil is doing all he can to turn Job away from God. Mm -hmm. He tries the first thing by taking his livestock, his, his taking his, his, his food supply and his means of income, then also his children, then he tries his help. You understand? Uh -huh. If the devil already has you, what does he need to kill you for? That number one. Well, number two, you have to understand. The devil allowed Job's wife to live so she could further agitate and aggravate Job. He allowed Job's wife to live so she can further bring pain and agony to Job's life. You have to understand because instead of her being a support to him, instead of her saying, baby, we're in this thing together, instead of her saying sweet things to Job, she said, are you still going to be a man of integrity? Why don't you just curse God, curse God, and die? Add an insult to injury. Make the things worse. The devil used Job's wife to make things, he tried to use her to make things worse for Job. You have to understand, the devil will use whoever make themselves available. That's right. That's right. He will use whoever makes themselves available, and he will use them to do all he can to destroy you. Why did he let his dog on woman leave? <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Use her as an agent of wickedness against Job. He used her to further agitate, aggravate, and frustrate Job, trying to get Job to the point where he would do what she said by cursing God and die. Right. Right. Mm. God said, You can touch everything. Just don't touch him. Mm -hmm. So he spared his dog on him. I'm going to spare her because I'm going to use her. If everything, I, everything else I do don't work, I know what to get to. I know somebody. And if nothing else works, I know what to get to. I'm going to use her. Are y'all here? If he can't get you other way, he'll get the one that's closest to you. Don't talk to me up against somebody. So, 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 Satan had it figured out. I'm going to spare her because if all else fails, y'all ain't talking up here. If, if all else fails, I still got a rib in the bush. If all else fails, I know, I know she know how to aggravate him. She know how to get on his nerve. She, she know how to say things that she shouldn't say. She know how to do it. I got her feeling to take the pain of our tongue. She, she know, she know, she know how to be a, a, a devilish woman. She don't know how to master her feelings. She don't know how to master her emotions so I can use her. You know how some of y'all get when you get emotional? Talk to me, somebody. All the emotional folks say amen. He spares her. I'm going to use her. I'm going to use her as my instrument to get to him. 
You gotta be careful, brothers and sisters. That's right. You never know who the devil is yeah, plotting to you. Right. To get to you. Right. Could be somebody on your job. That's right. Could be somebody in your classroom. Right. Could be somebody in your church. All right. Could be somebody in your house. Amen. Somebody in your own bedroom. Yeah. The devil could be using somebody close to you, somebody that you least expect. Good God Almighty. Somebody that you least expect. Are y'all listening in here? So now Job is so messed up. I'm going to close on this right here because it, it's so much more than I want to. It's so much more. It's so much more. But I want you to see this. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you talk like a fool, right? <laughs> but shall we receive good in the hand of God and not receive evil? All right. In all of this, all of it. did not Job sin with his lips? All right. Job had enough sense to know that don't care who we are, some good's gonna come our way and some bad's gonna come our way. Are y'all hearing me in here? I don't care how good you try to live, some good's gonna come your way and some bad's gonna come your way. The Bible text it speaks in plainly now when Jesus said that he called his son to shine on them. Just and unjust, and it rains on them. Good and evil. So, so don't care who you are. All of us are gonna have our measure of sunshine, and we all gonna have our measure of rain. We gonna have our ups, and we gonna have our downs. Are y'all hitting up here? I don't care who you are in this life. You gonna be up sometimes. You gonna be down sometimes. You gonna smile sometimes. You're going to frown sometimes. You're going to laugh sometimes. You're going to cry sometimes. Here in this life. None of us are exempt from hard times. None of us are exempt from times of struggle, from times of adversity. None of us are Don't get how saved, gifted, anointed you are. None of us are exempt. Are y'all hear me in here? Amen. So I want to show you this before we close. I want you to get this right here. Many times we've heard the scripture <coughs> going where the wicked shall see some troubling the women's soul shall be at rest. Many times I've heard people say, I want to go where Job declared mm -hmm. that we can shall see some trouble and that we should be at rest. Right. How many of y'all want to go to that place? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all are, are, are anxious or ready to uh, uh, just want to get to that place where Job declared that we can shall see some trouble and I was wicked and we should be at rest? I need you to hear this right here. In chapter 3, this is what I want you to see. You have to understand, Job is so messed up right now. Even though he maintains his spirituality, even though he maintains his respect and his reverence for God, mm -hmm. which is a great thing, his spirituality is intact. But however, it starts to now weigh on him psychologically. Chapter 3, we see where it starts to weigh on him psychologically. This perfect, upright man, this man that shone evil, this same man, we now see that the stuff he has gone through, that he is dealing with, it is now starting to weigh on him psychologically. I need you to understand, brothers and sisters, I don't care who you are, if you go through enough stuff, 
it can start the way on you psychologically. Are y'all here nothing here? Amen. If you go through enough pain, enough discomfort, enough stress, enough struggle, it can start to weigh on you psychologically. I know some of you think that it won't ever happen to you where you haven't been through enough. If you go through enough, I guarantee you, it will start to weigh on you psychologically because sometimes you start to think about the stuff, you start to ponder about the stuff, you contemplate about the stuff, and the more you think about it, the more it starts to weigh heavy on you, but the more you think about it, the more the devil starts to mess with your head, the more you think about it, the more you try to reason why did it happen? Why didn't God stop it? Why didn't God turn it around? It starts to mess with you psychologically. I don't care who you are in this place. If you haven't been there yet, it's simply because you haven't been through enough. But if you go through enough, it will start to weigh on you psychologically. And that's why you got to be intact spiritually so that when it starts to mess with, you, mess with you psychologically, you will still be able to maintain and hold on despite what you go through. But the spirituality got to be intact. Because it will start to weigh on you psychologically. And when it starts to mess with you psychologically, if you're not spiritually in tune, if you're not spiritually grounded, the devil can start to mess with your mind in such a way that he can pull you away, way, way, way away from the Lord. Uh -huh. Pull you down into a dark place. A place so dark and so heavy that you feel like you just can't get up out of it. Amen. And that that's where you're going to die at, in that place. Look at the text as we close. Listen to this right here. I got to read through this because I really want you to get this. Joel chapter 3, after all this stuff took place, he says, and Joel spake, and he said, let the day perish where he had I was born. And the night in which it was said, as a man child can see, said, let that day perish. My birthday, the day I was born, let that day perish. Let the day perish that I was born. Let the day perish, the day that I was born, let that day perish. I wish I'd never been born. This is what he says. Let that day be darkness is nothing to celebrate. Let not God regard from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Wow. He said this in verse number seven. Let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come there. Job is in a place right now where he is so discombobulated. Yes, He's in a place where, again, there's so much mental turmoil going on right now. He's at a place where he said, I wish the day I was born had never taken place. And from this day on, let that day be darkness. Let that day never be celebrated. That day, the day I was born, This man is going through. He, he's going through. Yeah. But I want to show y'all something. Go down to this right here. Verse 11. He said this. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the bed? Well, watch this. Number one. Why died I not from the womb? He wished he was still born. All right. Job is going through so much right now. It's affecting him so psychologically that Job wishes he was still born. Yes, 
Do y'all see this right here? It's right in the text. Job wishes that he was a stillborn baby, which he had died in the womb. Why did I not give the ghost when I came out? And man, he said, look, 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 even when I did come out, I wish I should, I, I had died when I came out the womb. If I didn't die in the womb, I should have died when I came out the womb. Do y'all see this? Do, do y'all understand the depth of this man's pain? Do you really understand? He says, for now, he said, why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I should suck? In other words, what he's saying is, why, again, the knees, <laughs> uh, instead of them suffocating me, they pushed me forward. And then the breast being, again, providing life for me through the milk. Why, why did all this take place? I wish I was dead. This upright, perfect, God-fearing man right now wishes he was dead. Amen. Uh, sisters, I want to show you this. For now, should I have lain still and been quiet, and I should have slept, then had I been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as a hidden, untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. Brothers and sisters, he's saying, if I was dead, I could be dead with the dead kings, dead counselors, dead princes. Or if I had an untimely birth, or been like an infant that never saw light. Again, when a mother, when a child dies in a, when they have a miscarriage, so I, I just wish I had been a miscarriage. Oh, I wish I had been uh, 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 a pre, what do you call it, a, a pre, what do you call it, premature birth, but yet at the same time die. I wish I had died prematurely. I wish I had died. I wish I had died. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. Now, this is what I want you to hear. When Job talks about the place where the wicked cease from troubling and the wind be arrested, he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about death and the grave. Job is not talking about heaven. He's talking about death and the grave. So when we say, I want to go where Job declared the wicked shall cease from troubling, and the shall be a wreck. What we're saying is, I want to go to the grave. All right. Th that's what we're saying. We're saying we want to die and go to the grave. Because see what happens? We hear stuff. We have a lot of people in church, people say stuff. We repeat what we hear without understanding what it means. We repeat what we hear, but we don't understand what it means. Job is not talking about going to heaven. Job is talking about going to, talking about dying in the grave. There, the wicked shall see some trouble. All right. And the weary shall be at rest. Job wants to die. He's not talking about going to heaven. He's talking about going to the grave. Job is so psychologically despondent right now. He just wants to die. He would rather be in the grave then go through what he's going through right now in his life. All right. Brothers and sisters, let me show you this right here. So you'll really see what I'm saying. He said, 
There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the word be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor because the day the small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. It's talking about death and the grave. And it goes on, wherefore is light given to them that is in ministry, in misery and life unto the bitter and soul which long for death, but it comes not, dig for it for hidden treasures, blah, 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 blah. For my sign come before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing that I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. The point is, Job was in such a state of despair. The only answer for him was the grave. Because at least in the grave, he wouldn't have to deal with what he was dealing with. That's right. At least in the grave, he wouldn't go through what he was going through. Mm -hmm. That's all Job, Job had hope for. That's where his hope was at this particular moment in the text. But see, when you and I, because you have to understand, you have to understand, at this point, there was no resurrection. The resurrection was, you know, what, they, they knew nothing about the resurrection. Jesus Christ was not the same. Nothing about the resurrection. The grave, to them, was the final place. Holy and so again, they just want to go to the grave. But you and I, through Jesus Christ, even when it gets rough, when it gets tough, when it gets to a point where we just feel like we cannot make it, but we want to just throw in the time, we don't have to wish for the grave. We don't have to wish for death just for peace sake. We don't have to wish for the grave for peace, for peace sake. No. It is through Jesus Christ that we have hope for eternal life. We have hope for a better life. We have hope for a new life. It is through his resurrection that we will have that life what the Bible talks about where there shall be no more crying, no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. But all of that, all of that is based solely on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's based on us receiving Christ as our Savior because of what he did on Calvary and because of what God did for him on the third day by raising him up from the dead. All right. It is because of that right there that we have hope beyond the grave. That's why the text asks the question, death is your sin, grave where is your victory? We have hope beyond the grave. And that hope comes through Jesus Christ by way of the resurrection. By way of his resurrection, you and I have hope beyond the grave. We have hope for joy eternal, peace eternal. We have hope for all the good things that God promises in the scriptures that come with us knowing Christ as our Savior. Again, we have hope beyond the grave. It's so important to know Jesus. Amen. Because he gives us hope beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. Now, in retrospect, yes, heaven is the place where our weary souls shall be at rest. In retrospect, yes, it is that place where there will be no wicked to trouble us. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Job was talking about. Job was talking about the grave. Because again, he just wanted to die. He wished he had never been born. He wanted to just leave this earth because the pain was so unbearable. 
He just wanted to die. So when we say, I want to go where Job said, now what we're saying is we want to go to the grave. Mm -hmm. So let's just make sure we be mindful of what we say. Amen. Be mindful of what we repeat. Make sure we get understanding. The Bible says, Lord, I get it, get what? Amen. The Bible said that he would give you pastors that will feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. Read the Bible. That's what he gives you pastors for. Because we need pastors. Even y'all that think you don't need a pastor, you need a pastor. Amen. 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 Yeah, the handful of y'all that think yep. you don't need one. Yep. We need a pastor. Let me back this again. Yes. The handful of y'all that think that you don't need one, we need a pastor. Yes. That's why yes. God gave them to us. Yes. That's why he ordained them for us. Right. We need a pastor. Amen. We need that. We Amen. need understanding. Amen. We need knowledge. We need that. We really do need it. Joe said, the thing that I greatly fear is coming upon me. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, things will happen that you least expect. Amen. Some things that happen in life that you didn't see coming. Amen. How many times have you been in a place in life where you say, I didn't see it coming? Amen. I did not see that one coming. Amen. Anybody been there before? Yes. Something popped up caught you off guard mm -hmm. and you didn't know how to react to it because right. you didn't see it coming. Right. Something popped up took your breath away because right. you didn't see it coming. Right. Something almost knocked you off your feet. Why? Because you didn't see it coming. Right. And because you were not prepared for it, it almost took you down mm -hmm. and it almost took you out Amen. because you didn't see it coming. Job didn't see it coming. That's why, brothers and sisters, again, we need the Lord. Amen. <coughs> Just as God's hedge was on and around Job, the fact that you're in here today tells me that there's a hedge around you. Amen. Unless, unless you are the agent of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Meaning, maybe you are one that Satan has planted here. Mm -hmm. Maybe Satan left you here mm -hmm. to aggravate some of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you have not left this church because Satan has you here to aggravate me. <laughs>
is that God is still on the throne. What I do know is, no matter what the devil does, he can't do anything unless God allows him to do it. And if God allows him to do it, God has a greater purpose in mind. What you must understand is, you can't fault God for the stuff that the devil does. And when you don't know the difference, what happens is, you will fault God. But Job, the Bible says, in all his Job did not see it, nor did he charge God foolishly. He had no idea what was going on. But he had enough sense to know that wasn't God. God wouldn't do nothing like that. And God didn't do it. That the devil that did that. See, at some point, you got to know God enough to know that God wouldn't do nothing like that. No, that, that, that's not God's character. That, that's not the makeup of God. God wouldn't do nothing like that. That couldn't be God. That had to be nobody but the devil. But you got to know God. You got to be that close to God to know this. You got to be this and that close to God to know the difference. Because too often God gets blamed for stuff he didn't do. If you here, have not received Christ, you need to get saved today. We don't know how we're going to leave here. All we know is we're going to leave here. Some are going to leave through sickness. Some are going to leave in a car wreck. Some may even leave by drowning. Some may just pass away peacefully in their sleep. Some may be in the wrong place at the wrong time and get shot. We don't know how we're going to leave here. But we're going to leave here.
already saved, already saved, already saved. Maybe you've never been baptized. You're already saved, but never been baptized. Preach, I want to go into what I want to experience that outward expression of an inward change. I want to get baptized. You come. I want to join St. Philip Baptist Church. I want to become a member here. I want to be connected to this church. You can come. You can come. You may have been coming, but you say, preach, I want to make it official. Your hand of salvation, oh God. For sister 
healing of the mind of God. Somebody psychologically, Lord God. They may be at that point, God, where Pastor was talking about. Then they say, I don't know what to do. I'm in a place of isolation. I feel like I'm all by myself. I'm down, God. But Lord God, I ask, oh God, now, that you restore unto them, oh God, spiritually, oh God. Create clean hearts and renew minds in us, oh God.
Come on!